Hi, good day everyone. First of all, thanks a lot for watching another video around cloud provider IAM. In this video, we are going to talk about similarities and differences. Uh, uh, in this video, we will primarily pick and choose three major cloud provider, AWS, Azure, and GCP. Again, if you guys have any comments or question, please feel free to put it in the comment section. Uh, first question comes, to everybody finds why we need to care about all these things. Again, there are a few reasons, uh, I believe. Again, you can have your own reasons, uh, learning and reading about the similarities and differences. So majority of the organization, at least I talk to and work with, have already started adopting multi-cloud environment. So this was the first main reason. Second reason is like from a very high level perspective, we may think uh, the cloud provider IAM model might be the same across three of them. But when you start uh, deep diving a bit more, you will see there are so many differences. I tried uh, searching some information on YouTube and Google, but not a lot of good information available around the differences and the similarities. Last but not the least is, it becomes a lot more fun when you start tying all these IAM concepts in whatever technologies you try to adopt in the cloud environment. Again, IAM is becoming one of the very basic and fundamental service for cloud, and it generally gets used for most of the uh, things uh, in one way or another. Uh, so let's look into the identity management aspect part first. So in AWS, you can manage your identities within each and every AWS billing account. But nowadays, as we see more and more number of organizations, they are adopting a multi AWS account strategy. So majority of the time, you might be leveraging upon AWS SSO or formally uh, or or named as now named as I'm um, identity center. So within AWS, so there is one of the identity type called I am roles. Though you can manage uh, somewhat I am roles from the AWS SSO uh, permission sets, but behind the scenes, I am role still gets created within each and every billing account. So this is the first thing on the AWS side. On the Microsoft Azure side, most of the identities are being managed in Azure AD. The only exception is like whenever you are trying to leverage upon manage identity, it gets created within the Azure subscription. But behind the scenes, it do create a Azure AD service principle. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more, how does this entire end-to-end -end workflow is going to look like, you can watch my other video on the Microsoft Azure IAM guide. Last one is GCP. It follows the same management model as Azure. All your identities gets managed inside the Google Cloud Workspace or the Cloud Identity, except the service account. The service account gets created within the GCP project. So now let's look into the most powerful account for each of the cloud service provider. AWS powerful account is named as root account. There can be only one AWS root account per AWS billing account. In short, if your organization has, for example, 50 AWS ac account within your AWS organization, then you will have to manage 50 different AWS root account. On the Microsoft Azure, uh, your most powerful account gets created within the Azure AD and it is named as Global Administrator. You can have as many Global Administrator accounts you want, but as per the Microsoft recommendation, you shouldn't have more than five Global Administrator accounts. The last one is GCP. In the GCP, the most powerful account is named as GCP Super Admin Account. Again, similar to Azure, uh, you can have as many super admin account as you want, but probably you might want to restrict it because if anybody steals or able to steal the 
uh, credentials of the session token of the super admin account, then it's going to be very dangerous for your organization. So this is one of the most interesting slide. Again, I believe you guys should take a screenshot and keep it for your future references purposes. So here you see the differences between AWS, Azure, and GCP. First thing on the identity side, AWS, they call it a principle. In Azure, they call it a security principle. And GCP, they call it principles. This is the first thing. So in AWS, role is considered as one of the identity type. Whereas if you look at Azure and GCP, so role is not considered as the identity type, but it's more on to if you want to provide a permission sets. It's a combination of uh, what and which. So whereas, so if we start looking at like uh, what's the what's the exact replica of like role uh, of Azure and the role of GCP in AWS, it is called IAM policies. And another difference is like in Azure and GCP, you can see uh, you can assign a permission or so the grant permission at a specific scope. Whereas in AWS, at least for the grant permissions, there is no such concept of scope. However, AWS do have a guardrail policy named service control policy. In the service control policy, there is a way you can assign or you can attach the service control policy to a specific scope. One key difference between AWS Azure and GCP is AWS has got a concept of a assumed role. So here you see any of the entities uh, could be your human or a machine entity, could be the role, could be application running on EC2 or Lambda or wherever in the AWS infrastructure, they can assume a role. And once they assume a role, they will have the desired permissions to perform the given task. So these are the few key differences just to summarize. So role in AWS is very different from role in Azure and GCP. Uh, only in Azure and GCP for grant permission, there is a concept of attaching it to the score. The last one is assumption of a role. Assumption of a role concept is applicable only in AWS. So now uh, uh, we have talked about identity management. Let's talk about how within each of the cloud provider, provider you can assign the permissions. In AWS, you can assign the permission with the help of the grant policy type. In grant policy type, it can be your IAM policy or it can be your resource-based policy. These are the two different policies are the grant policy type. And Again, uh, in the you once you attach this policy, uh, the permission can be granted within the same billing account, or it can be done choosing a cross account as well with the help of a assumption of a role or with the help of the resource based policy. So in Azure and GCP, if you see, it's primarily state forward. So with the help of the Azure role. And GCP role, you will be assigning the permissions. Again, you can attach it to a different, different scope. Ideally, you should be assigning the permission to the lowest possible scope. The whole idea is if you are assigning a permission at the GCP organization or the management group level, so what's gonna happen? So below your management group or below your GCP organization, what of the project folder is gonna be located, identity, or principal will be able to inherit all the different permission, which is not a good thing from a least privileged standpoint. So then comes the guardrail. So guardrail is nothing but it can help you in the governance inspect across your entire, entire organization. First on AWS, so there are quite a number of guardrails AWS provide. So the first thing is the SCP policy, or some people call it a organization policy. So again, this policy can be applied at a different, different level. You can apply it at a specific AWS account, OU, or you can apply it like, I think it cross entire AWS organization. Second thing is the policy boundary. It 
gets applied at the individual IAM user or a role level. The third thing is the session policy. The session policy gets applied within the specific user session. Deny policy, you can apply it at the IAM level. So when it comes to the Microsoft Azure, Azure got like a couple of guardrails. The first one is the Azure resource, resource lock. So what it can do, it can help you to prevent any kind of a deletion and it can allow you to read only kind of a resources. The second uh, guardrail what Azure provide is Azure IAM policy. Again, this IAM policy is different from the AWS IAM policy. This IAM policy is similar to your AWS SCP. With the help of this, uh, uh, this IAM policy, what you can do, again, you can restrict uh, anybody within your organization to start using the resources outside your designated region, or if you want to enforce, hey, your buckets should be encrypted, you will be able to enforce all these policy using, the, using Azure IAM policy. The third one is called Azure Deny Policy. Again, if you want to restrict a specific action from, from the Azure principle, you will be able to do that. So when it comes to the GCP, GCP organization policy is very similar to Azure IAM policy and it is it is somewhat similar to your SCP policy as well. It can help you in the governance aspect as well. And GCP also got a deny policy concept. So a couple of months back when I checked, it was still in the beta phase. So, so the whole idea is with the help of the deny policy, you can prevent any GCP principle or principles to perform any actions. So this is a little bit about guardrails across the AWS, Azure, and GCP. So then uh, comes the applications. If any applications sitting within your uh, cloud provider, they wanna have an access to other, other applications or other services, so how you can do that? So within AWS, so again, as we talked about it, what you can do if your applications are running on EC2, Lambda, ECS, EKS, or whatever, you can simply assign a IAM roles. And with the help of the IAM roles, so these entities will get a desired permissions. So this is the first thing. On the Microsoft Azure, so what you have to do, you have to create a managed identity and you have to assign those managed identity to your virtual machine, cloud functions, and so on. The third thing is a GCP. In a GCP, what you have to do, you have to create a service accounts, and then you have to assign those service accounts to your virtual machine, cloud functions, and so on, or to your containers, and so on. So this is how application access is gonna look like. If one application, uh, if application sitting in like one of the cloud provider, they wanna talk to, talk to some other services within the same cloud provider. You can leverage upon IAM role, manage identity or service account. So however, if application is sitting outside your CSP environment and they wanna access some sort of resources sitting within your cloud provider. So these are some of the things. The first thing is on the AWS side. AWS, they have, uh, I think two to three months back, they have a sound, uh, announced a new uh, uh, new technique, they call it a AWS IAM roles anywhere. So using this, so your applications can uh, can get a temporary credential and can start talking to, uh, can start talking to your application sitting within your AWS environment. Another way, another traditional way, is you can still leverage upon an access key and the secret access key. But whenever you are assigning the access key and the secret access key, you have to make sure that you should be rotating these keys on a periodic basis in case attacker is able to get hold of these credentials. On the Microsoft Azure, so what you can do, you have to leverage upon a Azure application keys. On GCP side, you have to leverage upon a service account keys. Again, this is some of the some of the ways available how your application sitting outside the cloud environment, they can communicate. Apart from that, I believe. Uh, you can still leverage upon federated kind of a means. So then uh, when it comes to the human access to the cloud service provider, again, there are a few different options 
um, few different options what all of these cloud providers provide for access to AWS. So few options you can think of. Create a local users within each and every billing account. But if your organization is too big and even if organization is too small, so sometimes it gets very difficult to maintain and manage so many, so many local accounts. And it's more like a no-no kind of a thing from AWS as well. The second option you have, so leverage upon an AWS SSO or identity center. Within the SSO identity center, you can create a local users. You can integrate with your AD or you can integrate with your external IDP like Cybra. So this is the second option available. On the Microsoft Azure, there are a few different options on the table. You can create a local Azure AD users or you can use a Azure AD Connect or a Cloud Connect. So using that, you can synchronize your identity from AD to Azure AD. So that's another way. Third way, you can still leverage upon an identity factoration kind of a concept. That's where Cybra can help you. When it comes to the GCP, in the GCP, you can still create a local user within the GCP workspace or a cloud directory. And within the Google, you don't have to worry about like uh, creating any kind of a user as long as user is sitting on your Google accounts, any kind of a Google account. It can be your Gmail, it can be your Google Groups account. You can assign your permissions. But if you start digging a little bit deep, assigning any kind of a permissions to the Gmail or any kind of a personal account. So most of the time, it's like a no-no kind of a thing. So that's where your GCP organization policies or a uh, policies is gonna come into picture. The last thing is, if you wanna leverage upon some sort of a identity provider, that's where you can leverage upon a CyberArk identity provider. So uh, then this is the last slide for this particular video. So many times, so when you uh, really wanna have or wanna assume a role or wanna have a elevated access, so you really wanna enforce some sort of a approval workflow. Because many times, especially in the production environment, uh, none of your administrator, none of your developer, they, uh, they should have any kind of a administrative or any kind of a elevated kind of access. So that's where, so whenever we talk about some sort of a native tools, so as per my research, on AWS and GCP, there is no such concept available. The only option what you have, you can reach out to CyberArk representative and CyberArk, we have come up with a new solution called Secure Cloud Access. So where we can help you to provide a just in time and just enough access to AWS or a GCP environment. So this is the first thing. Second thing is in the Microsoft Azure. So Azure is a little bit advanced where you can leverage upon a native tool called Azure Privilege Identity Management. Again, with the help of the Azure PIM, it can help you not only in terms of like having a elevated privileges uh, in, the, in the Azure, but also into the uh, Azure AD as well. Like in the Azure AD, if somebody wanna elevate themselves after a approval workflow, they will be able to do that uh, with the help of the Azure Privilege Identity Management. Uh, so I think that's it from my side for this first video. Again, for the next video, we are going to talk about what are the different native tools that exist to understand who has access to what within AWS, Azure, and GCP, and how to determine the least privilege policy. So again, thanks a lot, everyone, for watching this short video.